Hi, I'm Matt with Appliancevideo.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the condenser fan motor on this Whirlpool freestanding ice maker. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the water. You will need the following tools before you begin this repair. A flathead screwdriver, a quarter inch nut driver, a 5 16 nut driver, a ratcheting wrench, and a two x four or other type of support tool. A defective condenser fan motor can typically cause excessive noise coming from underneath, down by where the compressor is at. Uh, if the condenser fan motor itself completely ties up the compressor is going to short cycle due to overheating because the condenser fan motor is there to basically cool the compressor. Um, if your condenser fan motor is bad, you're gonna get minimal ice production, if any, because the compressor is going to be short cycling. To begin this repair, we're gonna go ahead and open the door to gain access to our access panel. Now we're going to remove our front access panel. You've got four quarter inch screws holding the panel in place. Once the screws are removed, Pull the panel off. To remove the back panel, we're going to extract the five quarter inch screws holding the panel in place. Now we're just going to grasp the panel and pull down to pop the drain hose off. Now that we have our back panel removed, we're gonna begin by disconnecting the connector for the starting components. And we're gonna go ahead and just disconnect our ground wire on the compressor. And now we're gonna remove the quarter inch screw for the strain relief. and our ground wire. And this is just gonna give us a little bit more room to work with when we peel the cabinet back. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the two 5 16 screws holding the cabinet to the base. Now at this point, we're gonna to go to the front of the unit. Now we're gonna remove the two 5 16 screws holding the cabinet to the base. Now we're gonna to return to the back of the unit. Now at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lean the cabinet forward and wedge, well, we're gonna be using a brick. You can use a two by four, whatever you have to prop the cabinet up. Uh, when you do lean it forward, you do want to be careful because you do have all of your lines going to the compressor. You don't want to overextend it and kink any of your lines, but you can come forward enough to where you can get a brick or a two by four wedged underneath the panel. And that's just going to give you a little bit more room to work with here. Now this step here is optional. Uh, I like to do it this way just because it gets you a little bit more access, a little bit more spacing between the screws on the evaporator fan motor. Uh, you do not have to do this, uh, it just will free up a little bit of space. We're going to remove the four cotter pins that are holding the compressor in place.
Now we're going to remove all four washers. And we're just going to lift straight up on the compressor. Be very careful at this point. And just move it back just a hair. That's just going to give you a little bit more room to get to this bottom back screw that holds the fan motor in place. Now what we're going to do is remove the fan blade. You're going to go in with your left hand on the left hand side of the compressor and take your right hand and go over the top and just get both of your thumbs on the fan blade itself and just push, push out towards the condenser to pop the blade off. Now that we've got the fan blade off, we're going to remove the two quarter inch screws holding in the fan motor. And for the top one, you can actually go in with a flexible extension bit on, on a drill. And remove it. And the lower one, gonna use just a ratcheting wrench with a quarter inch bit on it. All right, once the screw's out, the fan motor will kind of just drop down. Now we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect the Molex harness for the fan motor. Now that you've got your harness disconnected, you're gonna basically just grab the motor and pull it right up through the top. tight you gotta kind of finagle it a little bit but it'll come out and uh, if you're doing the blade as well to remove the fan blade you can also take that out through the top here When you're reinstalling the fan blade, make sure that the raised edge is pointing towards your condenser. Your flush side is gonna go onto the fan motor shaft. So when they come together, it's gonna come up like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the fan blade. It's gonna take it and go right in through the top. And you just kinda Roll it in. And then just sort of set it as far back out of your way as you can get it to give you a lot of space to put the fan motor in. Now go ahead and install your fan motor. Make sure you run your Molex connector out the right hand side and then we're going to go ahead and connect the Molex. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is Install our two quarter inch screws. It's easiest to start with the top one 
because you can actually look over the top of the compressor and see your holes lining up. Once you have your top one started, leave it loose so you got a little bit of play on the bracket so that you can maneuver it to get your bottom screw lined up. Once you get your bottom screw started, then you can go ahead and come over the top with, a, with your extension and a quarter inch bit. Tighten your top screw. Now we'll go back to the bottom one and tighten that one down. Okay, once you have your two mounting screws in place. You can go ahead and reach through, grab your fan blade, pull it onto the shaft, pull it all the way in until it stops, and just give your Blade to spin, make sure it's not rubbing. Now we're gonna go ahead and reconnect the Molex harness. Okay, the next step is gonna be putting the compressor back in place. To reseat the compressor, we're just gonna be slipping it down over the pins that are sticking up out of the cabinet. Uh, just do a quick check, make sure all your grommets are positioned properly. Just grab the compressor and gently lift up. <laughs> Drop it in place. Now you're gonna go ahead and install Your four washers. And reinstall your four cotter pins. Okay, now we're ready to drop the cabinet down. Now we're just gonna go ahead and lift up, pull out your brick or piece of wood or whatever you had wedged underneath there. Gently drop the cabinet back down. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall our two 5 16th screws. Go ahead and reinstall our strain relief. Then we'll do the ground wire.
And we're going to go ahead and attach the ground wire to the compressor. And reinstall our Molex to the starting components. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the front of the unit. Now we're going to reinstall the two 5 16 screws that mount the cabinet to the base. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the back panel. To reinstall the back panel, we're just going to start by putting the drain hose up through the opening. Make sure your power cord is in this gap and your water line is in this gap here. And we're just going to go ahead and reinstall the five quarter inch screws. Now you can go ahead and reconnect whatever drain line you have to your actual drain line on the ice maker. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the front panel. And you got your four quarter inch screws. And that will complete the repair on the Whirlpool Freestanding Ice Maker. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com.